for all the success and spin put on the Apollo moon missions in the late 1960s, NASA has never fully answered the question, why have they never returned to the moon? Some ex-NASA employees know the answer, and that is that the moon is crawling with aliens. and that NASA astronauts confirmed this in the 1970s, leading many UFO researchers to conclude that NASA had been warned off ever returning to the lunar surface. So tell us how the moon got where it is, because you, you know that the moon is a satellite that's, that's actually a fake. Right, it was, it, it's, a, it's a spaceship, it was towed into orbit, I would say, 30 to 40,000 years ago. Now, the reason I say 30 to 40,000 years ago is because it's still within the history of man uh, that um, Velikovsky talks about uh, the different um, proselenes and the different civilizations that talked about the time when there was no moon and then when there was two moons and now we have one moon. How the moon was towed into orbit because the, the people that towed, that, that operate that stuff in Saturn and also Iapetus, uh, towed the moon into orbit. And he goes into here and explains exactly why he believes the moon was towed into orbit and how it was and how they grabbed on to the Mari Oriental. Who are you saying towed, towed the moon? In, Whoever. Into we, don't know. we don't so know. So he doesn't conjecture on who, no. he, you know, on what alien race, for example. No. I mean, obviously it's an alien race. No. Henry Deacon, our secret source, has also substantiated that the moon was towed into orbit. But have you got an idea what alien race was responsible for that? No, absolutely not. None. So anyway, I go to see uh, Norm uh, two years ago, and in talking with him, I said, by the way, the, electrical the electromagnetic vehicle um, that towed the moon into orbit, where is it now? And he said, I think it's on the back side of the moon. So when I got hooked up with Ron Schmidt, we started collecting photos on the back side of the moon and we found it. It's in the crater of Tchaikovsky. And the, the story of how we did it was so interesting and how NASA covered it up. There's, you know, like six different photos of Tchaikovsky as they tried to airbrush this ma electromagnetic vehicle uh, out of the picture uh, by making it an island. <clears throat> and, uh, but we got them. Uh, and um, we got two really good photos. One, was discovered by a lady who works with us in uh, Florida, and she discovered it on a thumbnail of Tchaikovsky. And what happened is when NASA was advertising this particular photo, you know, they airbrushed the big one, but when they had the thumbnail, somebody looked at that and said, "Hey, I'm not going to take the pro I'm not going to take the time to enlarge that, take the vehicle out and put it down. Nobody will notice it anyway." But we noticed it, and it's great. And that's where we got the the photo of the uh, EMV on the on the far side and then and Apollo 15 uh, flew over and they got some movies of it and uh, it's just a quick shot but uh, it's really interesting. I found this book Who Built the Moon by two researchers who've written other books um, one of them an investigation to Freemasonry and this book um, details the extraordinary anomalies relating to the moon and they came to the conclusion, and I absolutely bloody agree with them, and, and, and a bit more than, than that too, as I'll come to later, that this is the, what we're looking at. Um, the, the, the geometrical connections and everything, and, and the uh, mathematics and the relationship between them in terms of size and position is just mind-blowing. And the connections um, between these three bodies. And these mathematical um, geometrical um, connections only apply to these three bodies in the solar system. They don't play out against the other planets, ju and, uh, just these three. And the, the moon is so perfectly positioned that because of where it is, when we have an eclipse, it is the same size as the sun. That's why we have the eclipse. And the authors of Who Built the Moon say this, the moon is bigger than it should be, apparently older than it should be, and much lighter in mass than it should be, 
It occupies an unlikely orbit and is so extraordinary that all existing explanations for its presence are fraught with difficulties and none of them could cons be considered remotely watertight. When, when you go on and you say, where'd the moon come from? You get this story. And like so much in what we call science, that people take it as fact, it's actually a theory which repeated becomes fact. But then you go back and you find that it's a theory. And the first one is the moon was created by what's known as the whack theory or the big whack theory. And that is that a Mars-type planet came in, smacked the Earth, great chunk came off and became the moon. When the physics of that didn't work out, they came up with the double whack theory, where the Mars-type planet hit the Earth, bit comes off or whatever, and then the Mars-type planet thinks, well, I'll give, him, I'll give him one with the right, I'll give him one with the left, comes back and whacks it again, the old one too. Talk about bloody desperate. And the truth is, and, and, and honest scientists will tell you, they have no bloody clue where the moon come from, and it shouldn't, by physics, be there. The moon itself is kind of the eye in the sky. NASA says that the moon is apparently hollow. During the Apollo missions, uh, the command module crashed into the moon. And the moon rang like a bell for hours. There are craters on the moon which they cannot find bottom to. And it's thought by some researchers that these bottomless craters are entrances inside our moon. The whole enigma of the moon gets weirder and weirder the more you know it. Was the moon actually brought here from another solar system and put into orbit around our planet? Biologists say that life on this planet could never have occurred without our moon. And the reason for that is that the moon creates the tidal effect. And without the effect of tides and this rhythmic motion on the oceans, life would never have begun on this planet. In my mind, the evidence is there that the moon is a gigantic spaceship in orbit around our planet. It's occupied by some extraterrestrial race. In many ways, it's much like the George Lucas Death Star. Um, it was created way back four and a half billion years ago as an incubator to create life on Earth because without that moon being exactly where it was then and where it is now and doing exactly what it's done, there would be no higher life on Earth at all and probably no life at all, not even an amoeba. Uh, so it was created uh, as an incubator to create life on Earth. And if it hadn't been there, we wouldn't be here either. Uh, when the sun's light is blocked out by the moon mm -hmm. passing in front of it, because the moon is one four hundredth the size of the sun, but it's exactly one four hundredth of the distance between the two. So um, when we get um, them, in, the, them aligned, pendulums go crazy. There's no question that during the full moon... And I've talked to a number of people who work in the emergency medical field and yeah. police officers. During a full moon, people act weird, strange, by and large. They have the, the, the incidence of crime goes up, shootings. Uh, it, it's very, very strange. Why is that? There's got to be some connection here with the moon, with the full moon. That's probably not entirely surprising. Um, the human brain is uh, made up of a very, very large percentage of water. We only have to uh, observe the ocean every time the moon passes overhead and watch the way the tides happen on the Earth to understand that it has a tremendous gravitational effect. Uh, now, it's quite likely that uh, a full moon, when the moon is right overhead, uh, this effect is greater and um, has a, a biochemical effect on the brains of both humans and animals. The fact that the moon is so immense as opposed to a bit smaller object, but the fact that it is larger... Um, should that be a reason why people would say this is impossible? That's the reason why it has to be so, because the, the moon should not be as it is. And the moon is, the, the, is built using uh, two systems of measurement, the metric system and um, the ancient megalithic yard, meters and millimeters. 
Uh, and the moon is the same. We can deduce exactly um, the blueprint of how it was built. And there is no doubt about it. All the numbers um, are very clear. Uh, this was built to a, uh, a mathematical blueprint using the metric system.